Yo, what's up? Today we're learning Daf He of Masech Shabbos. Exciting stuff. We're going to start off with um, a continuation from yesterday. Still trying to identify the author of our Mishnah who says that um, the Akira and the Anacha does not have to be from or to a place that is for um, Amos by four Amos. Um, and then we're going to continue on with mostly, you know, things related to Otsa and Achnasa. And we're going to get a little bit into Melachas Machsheves, which is interesting. Um, that's all in this one marvelous staff of Gemara. Let's get started. Tafeo Muralef, Mesech Brachos, about seven lines into the page. Elo Amr Abzera. Okay, so again, we're trying to figure out who is the author of our Mishnah, right? Our Mishnah that says that if, let's say, the Ani takes something from Rosh Hashanah and puts it down in the hand of the Balabayas in his house, even though the Balabayas' hand is not Choshev, it's not four Amos by four Amos, it doesn't matter, it's considered a Hanacha, right? And also if the Ani would pick up something from the hand of the Balabayas, right, that would be considered an Akira. So who is that? We tried to say it was Rabbah, didn't work. We tried, no, sorry, we tried to say it was Rabbi Akiva, didn't work. We tried to say it was Rebbe, didn't work. Now, Rebzeira is offering another possibility. Hello, I'm Rebzeira. How many Acherimi? So Rebzeira says, who is the author of our Mishnah? Acherim. And Acherim, as um, we had a discussion in our beautiful WhatsApp group with Yisrael already about two months ago, um, on Daf Tesamud Beis of Mesech Brachos. Um, Acherim is generally assumed to be Rabbi Meir. Titania, as we learn in the Brisa, Acherim Omrim, Omad Bimkomo Vikibel Chayev, Akram Bimkomo Vikibel Potter. Acherim say that, okay, if Reuven is standing in his house and he chucks out Epis Abal in Rishus Arabim and it's a perfect throw and Shimon catches it. So we say that Reuven is going to be Chayev um, for Hotza Merishus, the Rishus. Because he obviously picked it up in his house, and the Rishus Ayachid, so there's an Akira and Rishus Ayachid. And Shimon didn't have to do anything in order to catch it. And Mamish came right to him. So therefore, it was all from like the action of Ruvain. And it was considered that Ruvain did the Akira, Ruvain did the Hanach and Rishus Arabim, and, and, and that's that. However, but if Shimon had to sort of run over to catch the ball, so then Shimon also participated in the Otsa, and it's considered like the Hanacha was, was, was related to, was, was on account of Shimon's activity, and therefore they kind of split it, so it's Pater Avalasar. Okay, in that case, Reuven did the Akira, and Shimon did the Hanacha. Okay. Now, but we said, Amon Bimkomo Viki Bel so we said that, however, if Shimon didn't have to, have to move at all, it just came right to him, and he, and he was Mechabalit. So then Reuven is, is Chayev, because he did a Hanach, an, an Akira in Rishus HaYachid, and Hanach in Rishus HaRabim. Hoba inan Hanacha agabi makom dalad veleka, but what about the fact that the Hanacha would have to be on a place of dalad al dalad, and that just doesn't exist here, because Shimon's hands are not four Amos by four Amos. So So we see that according to Acherim, um, a place of four Amos is not necessary. So let's say that the author of our Mishnah is Acherim. And that's why we say that if the Ani takes something from Rosh Hashanah and puts it into the hand of the Baal Abayis, he's going to be Chayev. But the Gemara says, V'dilma anachahu t'lo ba'inun ha'akira ba'inun o the same kasha that we asked the Gabi Rabbi Akiva, right? That right, when we tried to say it was Rabbi Akiva, we said the same thing, which is all we see from here is that Acherim doesn't require the Hanacha to be on a place of Dalad al Dalad. What about the Akira? We don't know anything about the Akira. Maybe you would say that the Akira would have to be in a place of Dalad al Dalad. And he might theoretically disagree with our Mishnah, which says that if the Ani would stick his empty hand into the through the window and pick up something from the hand of the Balabayas to an Akira, our Mishnah says that he would be Chayev. Maybe Acherim would disagree and say, no, that the Akira needs to be from a place of Dalar or Dalar. We simply don't know from this Brisa. 
V'anacha nami. And even legabe the anacha, right? Even legabe uh, uh, Shimon catching it. When we said that if Shimon catches it and doesn't have to move, so move him would be chayev. Dilma de pashit kanfe v'kibla. Di kanami anacha. Maybe Shimon didn't catch it in his hands. Maybe he, maybe he had some kind of a shawl with him, and the shawl was four amas by four amas, and he just received the uh, thing that Ruvain threw in the shawl, and that's why it was considered anacha because the taka was dalar adalar. Kila, we just we don't know enough information here really to be able to say with certainty that uh, Achayim could be the author of our Mishnah. Amar Rabbi Abba. So now Rabbi Abba chimes in. Masnisin nami kigon shekibla bitar bitraskal v'niach agabe traskal di kanami anacha. So Rabbi Abba says, you know what? You know what? You know what? Let's stop trying to find somebody who says that you don't need the akira and anacha to be from or to a place that is four um, amos by four amos. How about this? How about this? Rabbi Abba suggests that maybe in our Mishnah, when we're talking about putting it down and picking it up, it's not from somebody's hand. It's talking about a basket. That when it says that the Ani took an object from Rosh Hashanah, stuck his hand through the window, it's, he's not putting it in the Balabayas' hand. The Balabayas is holding a basket, and that basket is four Amis by four Amis. And where the Ani is putting it down, he's putting it down in the basket. And when the Ani sticks his empty hand through the window and picks up the object, he's picking it up from this basket and taking it outside. And that is why the Mishnah says that the Hanacha of the Ani or the Akira of the Ani, and also, of course, vice versa, if when the Balabayas is doing things, that is why the Mishnah says that it's considered Akira and Hanacha because it is actually talking about a Mokum Dalad al Dalad. Stop trying to figure out um, who, who holds that hands are, are, are significant? We're not talking about hands here. We're talking about a makum dalad al dalad. But the Gemara asks, but that's very beautiful. That's a very nice answer. But the Mishnah does seem to say the word hand, right? It does say that right? it, it explicitly says hand, right? If we look at the Mishnah, it says that, um, it says that Ani is putting it in the hand of the Balabais, or he's taking from the hand of the Balabais, not from the basket. So Tni Traskal Shabiyado. Okay. So rather teach, what's he doing? He, he's putting it not the Ani is not putting it di- the object directly in the Balabais' hands. He's putting it in the basket that is in the Balabais' hands. Or he's taking it out from that basket. Okay. The Gemara asks, Hatenach Traskal Shabereshus Hayachid. So, okay, this works from the perspective of the Ani. That if the Ani is in Rashus Arabim and he sticks an object through the window and puts it down in this basket, he's Chayev. Or if he picks something up from the basket and then puts it, brings it out to Rashus Arabim with him, Chayev. Because he's taking some from Rashus Hayachid, right? He's transferring. To and from, to or from, um, Rishus Harabim and Rishus Hayachid. Elatraskal should be Rishus Harabim, Rishus Hayachid who? But one second. <laughs> but what about in the reverse? What about from the perspective of the Balabais? The Balabais takes something from his house, sticks his hand out the window, and puts it in some kind of basket that's Dalad al Dalad in Rishus Harabim. Well, that's just a Rishus Hayachid. In that case, if we're talking about a basket here, the Balabayas is basically picking up something from Rishus Hayachid, sticking his hand out the window, and sticking it in another Rishus Hayachid. This basket is just going to be considered Rishus Hayachid. So now, let's talk about what this basket is for a second. So there's a Lakuti Rashi that points out over here. Apparently that's... Lakuti Rashi is basically a whole collection of Rashis from all over Shas. So apparently there is a um, Rashi later on in the Mesechta that talks about these baskets. And it says, Ein Amuk Asara. It says that this basket is not ten tfachim tall. So it really wouldn't be considered its own Rishus. Because in order for it to be its own Rishus, I believe it would have to have walls that are ten tfachim. And the fact that it's Dalad Adalad isn't enough to make it its own Rishus. So it is in Rishus Arabim. But we, but we are going to get to this in a minute. 
But in the meantime, however, so, so just in case you're wondering what this trust call is, it, it doesn't necessarily make sense. Okay, but we'll get there in a second. However, the assumption for now seems to be that this traskal would suffice to be considered a Rosh Sayachid. And therefore the question is that if, uh, so Rabbi Abba's suggestion about this traskal, right, and it's a makum dalad adalad, and that's what the mission is talking about, and that's why it's considered an Akira and an Anacha, that would only make sense when the traskal is in, inside the house. But if the traskal is outside, well then it's just going to be considered a Rosh in the Rosh Hashanah and when the Balabayas takes something from his house, sticks it through the window and puts it into this basket, he's just putting it into another Rosh Hashanah so there's no Hotzah. It's going from one Rosh Hashanah to another Rosh Hashanah. And the same thing would happen is if, if he pulls something out of that Traskal and brings it in the house. It's just from one Rosh Hashanah to another Rosh Hashanah. Right? So Lema, Dilok Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yehuda. Now if we're going to say that when the Balabayas takes something from his house, sticks it out the window, and puts it into this traskal, into this basket, if we're going to say that he's chayev, well then that means that this Mishnah is not like Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yudah, who says that a traskal and Rishus Arabim would be considered a Rishus HaYachid. Ditanya, as we learn in a Brisa, Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yudah Omer says the Holy Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yudah, no, it's Konev Rishus Arabim. If a person takes a pole, and he sticks it into the ground in Rosh Hashanah. Traska, and on top of this pole is uh, this basket that we're talking about. That's four amos by four amos, but um, it's not uh, you know ten ten tefachim tall. Fine. So zarak vinach al gabe al gabav chayev. So if somebody threw uh, an item from Rosh Hashanah, okay. And it landed in this basket. So we're saying that he's going to be chayav because he threw something into Rishus, uh, into a Rishus Hayachid from Rishus Arab. So we see that Rabbi Yossi is considered this, considering this basket to be considered a Rishus Hayachid. So the E, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda. So now if our Mishnah was like Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda, well then, Pashat Bala Bayes es Yadu Lachutz Vinasan the Soch Yadu Shal Ani, Amai Chayev. So now, if as we've proven that according to Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda, that a basket in Rishus, uh, that, 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 that this Traskal in Rishus Arabim would be considered Rishus Ayachid, well then, when the Bala Bayes sticks his hand outside of the window with an object in it, and puts it into the hand of the Ani that's carrying this basket, why should he be Chayev? Me Rishus Ayachid, Rishus Ayachid Kamapik. He's just taking the thing from one Rishus Hayachid to another Rishus Hayachid. So while, sure, we could say that according to Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda, uh, that according to Rabbi Abba, right, he's arguing that the Ani is holding this Traskal, but in order for that to make sense, this Traskal would have to be considered Rishus Rabim, and then we just have to say that our Mishnah is not like Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda, which is theoretically okay. I mean, our Mishnah is Tanaim, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda is a Tana. But, um, okay, I guess ideally it would be better if we could say that it agrees. So the Gemara says, however, and now this is going to sort of make sense of this whole Traskal thing. No, you can say that the Mishnah does make sense even according to Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yehuda. How? Because Hasam Lemaila Miyud Hochelamat Miyud. Oh, very good. Because in Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yehuda's case, it's talking about where the basket is on a pole that is above 10 Tfachim from the ground. Okay? So basically, so remember, as we've said already a few times, something that is above 10 Tfachim, that is higher than 10 Tfachim off the ground, is considered a Makum Ptur. It's no longer considered in Rosh Hashanah. And therefore, this basket in Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yehuda's case, is on a pole that's ten tefachim tall. It's on the top of the pole, so it's above ten tefachim. It's in a mokum p'tur. It's four amos by four amos. Now it has a little bit of a wall. It's a basket that has a little bit of a wall. It's not ten tefachim, it has a little bit of a wall. And then we say what's called good aches mechitzasa, which means um, that when you have walls, 
that are extended in the air, they can actually go downwards, right? So imagine if you have this pole, this thin pole, on top of it is this basket that's four amos by four amos. It has a little bit of walls. So we can treat it as if the walls go all the way down to the ground. And therefore what you have is, you have a basically a rishus that is four amos by four amos and more than 10 tefachim tall. So it's, it's mamish rishus, rishus ayachid. And that is why when you throw an object into that, from Rosh Hashanah into this basket, Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Yudah says that it would be considered um, throw, like throwing into Rosh Hashanah Yachid and it would be Otsam Rosh Hashanah Lerosh Hashanah. However, in our case, by the Balabais and the Ani, the basket is within Tent Fachim of the ground and therefore it's in Rosh Hashanah, therefore it's in Rosh Hashanah it's not, it doesn't have walls that are ten tefachim, so it's not its own rishus, and it's just in rishus harabim, which means that it's uh, really just rishus harabim. And therefore, when the balabayas sticks his hand out the window and puts it into the basket, it would be considered otzah me rishus, the rishus, because he's going from rishus hayachin into rishus harabim, and this basket is four amos by four amos, so it's chashuv, and therefore would be considered anacha. That is Rabbi Abba's suggestion that our Mishnah is talking about a basket. Okay, that our Mishnah is talking about um, that the Hutzah and the Anacha are happening to and from a basket and that's why it's considered Chashuv and it's considered Hutzah um, Me'ushus L'Rishus. Okay. Kashele Rabbi Abba. Now Rabbi Abba has a question. The Mishnah doesn't say that, you know, we're talking about where the Balabai or Sudani are putting it into the basket that is in the hand of the other person. It doesn't say that. It says in the Mishnah that you're putting it directly into the hand of the other person. So while theoretically, you know, we can argue that if they're holding a basket, we can make sense of the Mishnah, but the Mishnah doesn't seem to be talking about where they're holding a basket. So Ella, I'm Rabbi Abba, so Rabbi Abba gives his own suggestion. So Rabbi Abba has a funny suggestion, which is that it's talking about where the Ani was, he, 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 his hand was within three Tfachim of the ground. So basically the Balabayas took something from his house, stuck it out the window, and he put it in the hand of the Ani. But the hand of the Ani was very, very close to the ground. It was within three tefachim, three hands breadths of the ground. Right? A tefach is the height of your fist. So three of those, it was in three tefachim of the ground. And there's a concept, I assume that this is pshat, that there's a concept called lavud. Lavud means that when something is within three tefachim of something else, it's considered connected to it. And one example in our lives where we actually see lavud at play is specifically in Israel. I see it less in the United States, but in Israel, when people have a sukkah that doesn't have like, you know, strong walls, doesn't have wooden walls or something like that. It might have like, you know, some kind of fabric walls. So you'll see that there's actually like these straps going around the sukkah within like three tefachim of each other. That is love with that play right there. What those straps are, or maybe pay, you know, maybe next sukkah you'll pay attention to this, right? With some, sometimes when you have a sukkah with like fabric walls, so then there'll be these straps going all the way around the sukkah They'll have, have like five of these straps. They're each within three tefachim each other. And because they're within three tefachim, it's ke'ilu, they're all connected. And it's ke'ilu, you have a solid, one solid wall over there. So what Rabbi Abahu is suggesting is that the Ani is actually receiving this object from the Balabais in his hand. But his hand is within three tefachim of the ground. And therefore it's ke'ilu, the Balabais is putting it on the ground. And the ground, of course, is four, four amos by four amos. And therefore, uh, that is why it's considered... Um, a hanacha, because you're putting it in his hand, but his hand is on the ground, and the ground is four amos by four amos. That's why it's considered a hanacha. Vira omed katani. But one second, the, the Mishnah says that the ani is omed b'rishus harabim. He's standing in b'rishus harabim, and if his hand is within three tefachim of the ground, mistami is sitting. No, so the Gemara says besocha. He's talking about where he's crowd, he's like bending over. No, he's standing, but he's bending over with his hand very close to the ground. <laughs> okay. V'i ba'isem, or, or I can give you a different ukimta of how his hand could be close to the ground. Biguma, maybe he's standing at this in a, in a, in a, in a, in a pit. 
or I don't know how to define guma. I feel like pit isn't the right answer, but whatever. He dug out some kind of thing and he's standing in that thing that he dug out. And therefore, you know, his hand, since he is lower down, his hand, when it is extended to receive the item, is actually within three tefachim of the ground. Be by same a bananas, or you could say with a uh, midget, somebody who's very short, so his hand, the maisa, is going to be very close to the ground. Okay. Omar Rava, ich botane lashminan kol hane. Rava says, one second, friends. Did the Mishnah really go bend over backwards and go into such excruciating detail about the balabais bifnim, the ani bachutz, right? The, the, the two ways the balabais could be chayv to bring a korban chatas, the two ways that an ani could be chayv to bring a korban chatas, the four ways that each of them could be pato aval aser, the, right, the two ways that each one could be pato remotor. Kilu, we mamish went into a lot of detail about otza, meushus, leushus, and that Mishnah. And it was just to teach us, you know, when the guy's like bending over and his hand happens to be like very sort of, you know, unpractical, unlikely cases. Is that really what the mission is talking about? Ella Amarava, Yado Shel Adam Chashuvalo Kedalit Adalit. Rather, Rava says, a person's hand is considered like four Amos by four Amos. And that is why when uh, the Balabayas sticks his hand out the window and puts it in the hand of the Ani, it's Ke'ilu, he's putting it in a platform that is four Amos by four Amos from Rishus Arabim, and that is why he's Chayab. Um, similarly, when Ravan came, he said the name of Rabbi Yochanan, that a person's hand is considered like four Amos by four Amos. And that is why, you know, when, when we're talking about putting it into somebody's hands or taking it out from somebody's hands, it's considered a, an Akira or an Anacha because a hand is inherently considered to be four Amos by four Amos. Am Rabbi Oven, Am Rabbi Eli, Am Rabbi Yochanan. So says Rabbi Oven, in the name of Rabbi Eli, who says the name of Rabbi Yochanan. Zarak chayfetz v'noch b'soch yado shachavero. If a person threw epis and it landed in his friend's hands, chayev, okay, very similar to like what the Achirim said, right? That if Ruvain throws something and it lands in Shimon's hands, so, so, Mistama, I assume I we're talking about Ruvain threw from Rishus Arabim, Landed in Rosh or whatever Rosh Hashayach. Let's say landed in Shimon's hands in Rosh Hashayach. So Chayev. So it's considered like Reuven did Nakira and Anacha, and he's Chayev. My Kamash Malon. Yado Shel Adam Chashuv Lo Kedal Radal Va Amar Reb Yochanan Chad Zimno. You say, wait, what, 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 what? What's the Chiddush over here? That 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 Shimon's hands are considered to be like four Amis by four Amis. Reb Yochanan already said that two seconds ago, right? So Ma'u the tame of the Gemara answers, Hanimile Hecha de Achshiva Hu Liyade, Avalecha de Lo Achshiva Hu Liyade, Emelo Kamash Malon. So the Gemara says, Yes, Rabbi Yochanan did say that a person's hands is considered like Dalaramos by Dalaramos, but I may have had the Havimina to say that that is only when, when, um, Ki'ilu, there was a machshava to put it in the hands, right? The, 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 the balabayas, when he takes an object from his house, sticks it out the window, and he puts it deliberately in the hands of the ani. So I might think in that case, because the balabayas is like, has a specific intention to put it in the ani's hands, that's why the ani's hands are considered like dalad al dalad. But in this case, where Ruvain threw something, and Shimon just, you know, looks up and says, oh, whoa, there's something coming my way, and he catches it. So, you know, in that case, it was more happenstance. It almost reminds me of like, you know, people are throwing a frisbee in the park or something like that. And inevitably, the fri- you know, somebody has a bad throw and somebody looks up and it's like, oh gosh, and he catches the frisbee. So the guy who threw it didn't necessarily have intent. He didn't have intention for this person to catch it. He had intention to throw his friend. It was just a bad throw. Then this guy just looks up and he catches it. So I might think in that, in that case, um, it wouldn't be considered a, uh, a, uh, hanacha because because, you know, the guy who threw the thing didn't have intention for that person to catch it. So he didn't have a machshava that this person's hands should, you know, receive it and be like a dalit, makom dalit al-dalit. So I might have the have me to say that the person who caught its hands would not be considered like a dalit al-dalit. Kamash malan, that it is considered uh, dalit al-dalit and the person who threw it will be responsible for both the Akira and the Hanacha, assuming that the person who caught it didn't have to go anywhere to catch it. He just looked up and caught it. Fine. The Amar Rabbi Oven, 
Amar bi Eli, Amar bi Yochanan, Amar bi Mkomo v'kibel chayev. If Shimon is standing in his place and received the throw, then Ruvain is chayev for throwing the thing. Akam bi Mkomo v'kibel potter. But if Shimon had to chase after the flying object in order to catch it, well then Ruvain would be potter because it's considered like while Ruvain threw it and did the Akira, Shimon in, in chasing after it was responsible for the Anacha. And then, of course, quoting our Brisa from earlier, that if a person is standing in place and catches the object, so then the person who threw it will be chayev. If he had to run after it in order to catch it, well, then they split the akira and the anacha, and it's patra avalaser. By Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan asks the kasha, Zarak chayfetz b'venek or humim mukom of v'chazu v'kiblo. What if a person chucks a ball high in the air, and then he runs to go, you know, catch it, and sure enough, he catches it. So he did the Akira, he did the Anacha, but Ki'ilu, he did two different activities, right? He threw it, like generally, one person throws, one person catches. In this case, he threw it, and he chased after it, and caught it. So Ma'u, my Kamibayle, the Gemara said, wait, what, what exactly is Rabbi Yochanan's Kasha? So Amr Vada Barahava, Shnei Kochos Badam Echad Kamibayle. So Vada Barahava explains that Rabbi Yochanan is asking about can you have one person be responsible for two different activities, right? Do we say, Do we say that when one person does two activities, it's as if one person did both of the activities and it, it would be chayv, therefore it's kilu, he did the akira and he did the anacha when he catches it. Or maybe this guy, since he's so fancy and he can do both the, the throwing and the catching, it's as if He's like two people. It's as if, you know, one person threw it and one person caught it, even though he's so fancy that it was him in both cases. Ufater, and therefore it should be Pater, just like two people would be Pater. Teku. So the Gemara says we, we, we don't really know the answer to that. Am Rabbi Avin, Am Rabbi Yochanan. Says Rabbi Avin in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. Hichnis yadul so chatzur chaveru vekibel megishamim vehotzi chayev. Okay. So... Rabbi Avin says the name of Rabbi Yochanan. If a person sticks his hand, he's in Rosh Hashanah He sticks his hand into his friend's chotzer, so i.e. sticks his hand into Rosh Hashanah and he opens up his hand and he starts collecting rainwater, right? He's letting the rain fall into his hand and now his hand is filled with rainwater and he figures that he's going to now bring it back out to Rosh Hashanah So we say Chayev. He's Chayev for Otsah Me Rosh Hashanah Now, this of course is going to, doesn't make sense. Because in our mission we said that if the Ani sticks his hand into the house, the Balabais puts something in his house, and then the Ani takes it out, so they're, it's pot, they're, right, they're both potter, because Ani didn't pick anything up. He just received something and then took it outside with him. And as the Gemara said, Andaf Gimel Amr Aleph at the very bottom, right, Yodol that a person's hand is not resting on the floor, right? It's just sort of elevated in the air. And therefore, when it receives something and then he takes it out, it's not considered an Akira. So how come we're saying here that when a person sticks his hand into the Chatzar and receives rainwater and then takes it out to the Shusar Abim with him, he's Chayev. Why? There was no Akira. So Maske Flo Rebbe Zera. So Rebbe Zera asks this, this exact Kasha. Mali itino Chavero, Mali itino Shemaim. What's the difference if the Balabayas takes an object, puts it in the hand of the Ani, and then the Ani takes it outside to do Shusarabim, where we say he's potter? How come over here, when he, 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 he sticks his hand into the Chatzar, and the Eberster rains down a shtick of water, and it gets in his hand, then he takes that out? What's the difference? He didn't pick up anything. Iu lo avir akira. At the end of the day, this fellow didn't do an Akira. So the Gemara says, you're right. Lo tema kibel elakalat. Don't say that he received water, kilu, that he just outstretched, extended his arm into the Rosh Hashanah and let the rainwater, fo- into the Rosh Hashanah, into the Chatzar of his friend and let the rainwater collect in his hand. Rather say he gathered it. Because he gathered it, there was an Akira. Okay. But the Gemara is assuming, what does it mean that he gathered it? It means that kilu, it sounds like there was like water, maybe coming down like in a stream, let's say from the roof or something, or maybe just even the rainwater itself, but he was somehow like deflecting it with one hand into his other hand. So he was like being okay it from his regular stream to go into his other hand, and that's why there was an, an Akira. But, but we need that Nakira 
should be from on top of a place of four amos by four amos. Even if when you take it from somebody's hand, we said the person's hand is considered like four amos by four amos. But if you just have like a stream in midair and then you like deflect, you know, you kind of like uproot the, 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 traject the trajectory of the stream and reroute it to go into your hand, that's not an Akira from on four amos, on four amos. That's just like rerouting it in midair. Vileka. So, so Rabbi Chia Rav Huna says that it's talking about where he was able to redirect it from a wall. So let's say there was a wall of the Rishus, of the Chatzar, and there was water, I guess, you know, coming down the wall. And then he was redirected that water into his hand. That would be considered the Akira. But Agabi Kosal Nami Nach. But also on the Kotel, it didn't, it didn't, rest on the wall, the wall is vertical. It's going down the wall. So there was never a hanacha. In order to have an akira, there has to first be a hanacha, right? You can only uproot something that is already resting. This water never rested on the wall. It's just kind of running down the vertical wall. So the Gemara answers, So the Gemara answers, answers, no, just like Rava answered in a different case, which we're about to get to, that that different case is talking about the resolution in that case was that we're talking about a slanted wall. So we'll use that same resolution over here, which is that the wall is slanted, right? And therefore, when the rain comes down, it basically hits the wall on a slant, and that's already considered a hanacha. And because that's considered a hanacha, when this yid now uses one hand to reroute the water into his other hand, it's considered an akira. And when he brings it out to Rosh Hashanah, it's considered a hanacha and Rosh Hashanah, and therefore he's chayef for otzah. And where is that statement? Where is that context where Rava says that the resolution to that other context is a, is, is a slanted wall? So Ahadetanan, it's talking about the following Mishnah. So what's an iskopa? I understand an iskopa to be basically like a porch, right? Right, there's a, there's a Rashi, I believe in uh, Erevin, also from, from the Kuti Rashi, which explains that Ke'ilu, um, um, there, you know, you have like a, you have a house, a house is Rosh Hashayach. In front of the house, there's this, I understand it to be some kind of like a porch. Okay. So Malcolm Dalad Adalad, it's not exactly the Rosh Hashayach, assuming that I guess it wasn't, doesn't have a roof over it. So it's just some, some kind of a platform that on one side of it is the house, which is the Rosh Hashayach. On the other side of it is the Rosh Hashayach. Right. And this thing has a din of a Carmelis. It's kind of something in between. Okay. Fine. And he was reading a Sefer and Rashi points out that when, that the Sfarim in those days was Taka Megillah. Was Taka Megillah. A scroll. Okay. So he was on this, uh, this, um, porch. He was reading from his scroll. Vinis Galgala Sefer Miyado. And what happened was the thing got, uh, unrolled and now part of it, it, one end of the, of the, of the Megillah is in Rishus Arabim, but he's still holding on to one of the ends of the Megillah on this Iskopa which is a, a, has a din of a Carmelis. So the resolution is, go to Lo Etzlo, you could just roll it up and bring it back to him because like, you know, even if, even if it would have like Mamish, you know, ended up in Rosh Hashanah, the whole thing, you know, it, it would only be a, 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 a din dera to, to, to get it back, right? What, what, what does Rashi, so, uh, Rashi say? Right, the inafo kule miyadu mahadre le mershusarab in the iskopa lav chiyuv chatas ika. Hilka chashta derosho echad biyado ve en kan akira afilum shim shivos nami lo gazur. Right, because even since, since this iskopa, since this porch just has a den of a karmelis, so even if the whole thing would have fallen to Rishisarab, if he would have gone and collected it and brought it back with him into the karmelis, it wouldn't be chayav achatas. So certainly in this case where he's still holding on to one end of it, it didn't completely fall into the Rishisarab, he would be able to roll it back to bring it towards him. Fine. What about Hayekoi Baresh Agab Barosh Agab? What if he was reading on his roof? And the roof is a right, your house is a Rishusayachid, your roof is a Rishusayachid. And then when his Gagala say for Miyado. And then same thing. The 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 Megillah you know opens up and rolls into Rishus well, it rolls down the roof, and you're still holding on to one end of it. So Achloi Gilud Fachim Gal Etzlo. So as long as the end that rolled away is still higher than 10 tefachim off the ground, 
Well, then no problem. You could still roll it to you because it didn't never got into the area of Rishus Harabim. Rishus Harabim is only within 10 Tfachim of the ground. But if the Megillah did roll and the end of it is now within 10 Tfachim of the ground, so then Hofcho Alaksav, then what you do is then, you know, just flip over the Megillah so that the writing is not exposed. So it's not like disgraceful to see just like this Megillah hanging off the roof with the writing on it. So just flip it over and then wait till after Shabbos. We don't want you to roll it back to the roof. Ve'avinon ba'am, we ask, Amai ofcho al-aksav, how come we're flipping it over? Halonach, it's not like it landed in Rishus Arabim, still just kind of dangling. So ve'amarava, and if it didn't land, then what's the problem? Right, because as we said, in order for there to be an akira, it has to be stationary, it has to be resting, it has to have anacha. In this case, it didn't land in Rishus Arabim, so then removing it from the airspace of Rishus Arabim isn't considered an akira because it was, it was never resting. So Rava says, because we're talking about a, a, a wall that was slanted. That is where Rava says that the wall is slanted. And therefore, when the Megillah unraveled and one end is within 10 Tfachim of the ground, it's talking about where it was resting on, that, that, that end was resting on the slanted wall. And therefore, if you would pull it up, it would be an Akira. And even though the, the whole, th- even though you're still holding on to one end, end of it in your hands on the roof but since if it the whole thing would fall down it would be usher to pick it up so therefore even now um, when you're holding one one part of it we say just flip it over and then just leave it till after Shabbos fine but the Gemara says one second Eimur de Amurava b'sefer de Ovid denayach mayim miyavide denayche but one second I'll say that when it comes to a Megillah, which is a solid, right, that if it lands on, on this slanted roof, it will, it will, you know, stay there, stay stationary there. I understand why Rava would say over there that why we would, you know, why, why Rava would argue over there that, um, it's considered a Hanacha and we don't want you to roll it back to the roof with you. But over here, where we're talking about rain falling on a slanted wall, there's not going to be a hanacha. The water is going to keep on moving. So I don't know that Rava would necessarily assume that there was a hanacha that then, or that we would be able to say that in the case of the rain in the chatzer, that it was considered a hanacha, so that when this guy then redirects it into his hand, it would be considered an akira. Okay, so Ela Amar Rava. So rather Rava says, it's a little confusing because this is separate, meaning we had initially, the, the initially thing about the kosal mashupa was... Um, I guess maybe Reb Chiebre, the Rav Huna, was somebody else. Then we tried to bring a proof from Rava, but now Rava is giving an alternative answer. An alternative answer. So there's, the Gilion actually changes Rava up until now, until Rava. But in any event, th- this is now Rava giving an alternative answer to how we could, to this situation with collecting the rainwater and bringing it out to Rosh Hashanah where we say that you would be Chayev. So, Ela Amar Rava, Kigon Shekalat Me Al Gabe Guma. So Rava says, you know what that uh, Brisa is talking about? No, it's not a Brisa, it's Rabbi Yochanan. You know what Rabbi Yochanan is talking about? He's talking about where there was Epis, uh, I don't know if the word is pit. I, I'm not thinking of the right word. I feel like it's not pit, but some kind of dug out something in the ground. I don't know. Some kind of something in the ground. And there was water collecting in there. You stick your hand into the, into the chutzer of your friend. You stick your hand into that pit little thing. And then you pull out some water, you, you take out some water from there, so you mamish your ochre it from this pit thing, and then you bring it out to Rosh Hashanah. So in that case, you're going to be chayv, because you had an akira in Rosh Hashanah, and you're bringing out to Rosh Hashanah where you have an anacha. But the Gemara says, guma pshita. What do you mean? But if it's in a pit, so then when you pick it up, obviously you're uprooting the water and you'd be chayv. Why do I need Rabbi Yochanan to tell me that you're going to be chayv for Otsah Meir Rosh Hashanah in that case? Of course, it was an akira in Rosh Hashanah and an anacha in Rosh Hashanah. I may have thought to say that when rain, that when water falls onto other water, so you have this pit, the pit has water in it. When the rain is now falling into this pit, it's not considered a hanacha because water is moving, right? It wouldn't be considered a hanacha. And therefore, it's, when you pick up the rain, when you, when you scoop out the water from the pit, it wouldn't be considered an akira because there was never a hanacha. 
So Kamash Milan, that it is considered a Hanacha, and therefore when you pick it up from the pit thing, so then it would be considered an Akira. That's the Rav Latayme, and Rav is consistent with his reasoning. What's his reasoning? Do Amar Rav, Mayim Agabe Mayim, Hainu Anachason. That when water, you know, gets poured into other water, or falls into other water, that is considered its Hanacha, and it's considered at rest, and if you pick it up, it would be considered an Akira. However, Egos Agabe Mayim, Lav Hainu Anachason. But if you would drop a nut into water, and now the nut is floating on the water, that wouldn't be considered as though the nut is at rest. And if you would, let's say, pick it up from the water on Shabbos and take it into a different Rishos, it wouldn't be considered as if there was an Akira in the, in the original Rishos because it was never resting. But Yerava, Rav asked the Kasha, Egoz b'chli uchli tzaf al gabe maim baser egoz azlinon v'anaycha oduma baser kli azlinon v'alo naycha v'alo naych denaya teku. Rava asks, what if you have a nut and a nut is in like a glass jar and the glass jar is, 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 is floating in water. So on the one hand, a nut in a glass jar would be considered as though the nut is at rest, right? It's resting in the jar. On the other hand, the jar on, floating on the water, the jar is not considered as though it's at rest and therefore um, there's no hanacha. So what happens if you pick up that jar now from the water? Do we go after the nut and we say it's an, right, that it was resting and therefore this is an akira? Or do we go after the jar and say, well, the jar was floating on water, it wasn't resting, therefore there was no akira? So the Gemara says, take it, we, 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 we don't know the answer, the answer to that brilliant question. The Gemara says, Shemin Shetzaf al Gabe Yain. Machlokas of Yochanan Benuri Rabbanan. What if there is oil floating on top of, and you take your hand and you scoop up that, wa- that, that, that oil and you take it into a different rishos. Will that be considered as having uprooted the, as an akira of the oil from on top of wine? Do we consider that the oil was resting on the wine or not? So it's a machlokas of Yochanan ben Nuri in the Rabban and Ditanan, as we learn in a Mishnah. Shemen shetzaf al gabe yain vinago tvu yom bashemen. So what if you have oil that is truma and you have wine that is truma and the oil that is truma is floating on top of the wine that is truma. And a tvu yom, a tvu yom if I'm not mistaken, has a status of a sheni letuma. And a sheni letuma, of course, as you remember from the eighth parak of brachis, a sheni letuma can be metame. Well, not metame, is, is posel truma. That if you touch, if a sheni letuma touches truma, the truma now becomes pasul. Okay? And it cannot be metame other things, but it itself is pasul. So if a tvul yom touches the oil that's on top of the wine, the, the truma oil that's on top of the truma wine, lo pasal el shemen bilvad. So the chachamim say, that by touching the oil, you, the true, the, the tvul yom makes the oil puzzle, but that's it. The wine itself is fine, right? And the, 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 the oil won't then, since the oil is touching the wine, it's not going to be metame the wine because the oil becomes what's called pasul, right? If a sheni the tuma touches truma, truma becomes pasul, it can't make anything else tame. Okay? So, 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 Zel. So according to the Chachamim, we treat it as though the oil and the wine are separate. And when the Tvoyom touches the oil, so then it is, um, he only pos- makes the oil puzzle, but the wine is still fine. Now, that would mean for our case that the oil is not con- is considered like just like a nut floating on water, right? The nut wouldn't be considered resting on water. So here also, oil is considered separate from the wine and it's considered just floating on wine. And if on Shabbos you would take off the oil and bring it somewhere else, um, it wouldn't be considered hotza because it was never resting. Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri Omer Shneim Chubarim Zelaze. Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri says that the oil and the wine are considered connected. And when the Tvuyom touches the oil, so then he, he, he makes the wine puzzle as well. The whole thing is puzzle. And therefore, in our case, Legabe Shabbos, it's all considered connected. And therefore, if you would remove the oil from the wine and go to a different Rishos, it would be considered Hotzah Me Rishos the Rishos on Shabbos. V'amr Rabbi Avin, Amr Rabbi Eli, Amr Rabbi Yochanan. Another statement, 
from Rabbi Oven in the name of Rabbi Eli in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. Hayaton ochlim umashkin. So I, I, I almost kind of imagine it like this. You know, you have a guy, he's at his friend's house. His friend, open, or, you know, in a Shabbos, his friend opens up the refrigerator. He pulls out epis, I don't know, the hummus, the trina, you know, a few drinks, some water. He gives it to his friend and says, look, can you put it on the table? Okay. Okay. So the guy says, sure, no problem. And he's going, he's walking to the table. And he decides that instead of walking to the table and putting it down on the table, he's just going to walk inside and outside of the house the entire Shabbos. He's never going to actually put these items on the table. He's just going to keep on walking inside and outside the rest of the Shabbos. He changed his mind. So the Gemara says, right, so Amr Rabbi Avon, Amr Rabbi Eli, Amr Rabbi Yochanan, Ayatan Ochlin Umashkin, so he was carrying food and drinks, V'nichnas V'yotze Kol Yom Kulo, Eno Chayev, Ad Shia Amod. So, and he decides that he's just going to, you know, walk inside and outside of the house from Rosh Hashayachet to Rosh Hashayachet and back again all day long. So he's not chayev. Ad shiya amod. Until at some point he stops and then he goes to the different Rosh Hashayachet, right? So if at some point he's inside and he stops and then he walks outside again, well then he's going to be chayev, you know, assuming that he stops in, in Rosh Hashayachet and vice versa. If he stops in Rosh Hashayachet and then he goes inside and stops inside, he's going to be chayev at that point. But if from the initial, um, you know, Akira, when his friend gave him the food and the drinks, from the initial Akira, um, he wouldn't be Chayev, even if he stopped, even if he went outside and stopped. Because the, uh, so Rashi mentions for the first time now, what's called, right, Vatora lo Chayva ela Meleches Machsheves, right? That's the first wide line of Rashi. That in order for you to be considered Chayev, to bring a Korban Chatas, you have to have what's called Malachas Machshavis. You have to have intention to do the Malacha. And therefore, over here, when his friend gave him the food and the drinks and said, Can you put it on the dining room table? And he said, Sure. So his Malacha was not to do Hotza. His intention, his Kavana was not to do Hotza. His intention was at that point to put it on the dining room table. It was only once he was on his way to go to the dining room table, he said, You know what? I'd, I'd really have a much better time if I just keep on going in and outside all day. So. Even if he goes outside and he stops, he would be potter because the Akira was not with the intention of Hotza. As opposed to the Balabais, if he picks up something and sticks his hand out the window and gives it to the Ani, so the Akira and the Anacha was with the intention of Hotza. But here it wasn't, and therefore he's going to be potter. However, once he stops, and then he starts again, at that point he's going to be Chai, because then the intention for both the Akira and the Anacha was with the intention of Hotza. Or I guess Achnasa if he's coming in at that point. Okay. Amar Abaye. Vihu she'amad lafush. But when he stops, he has to stop in order to take a break. And the Gilion adds, Aval omed l'kasev patr. But if you just like stop for a second to like rebalance the load, well then that's not really considered um, stopping. And if he keeps on you know, going in and out, he would continue to be patr. Once he stops in order to take a rest, at that point when he starts again, it would be considered that he's being oker with the intention of uh, Otsah, and at that point if he stops in the other Rishos, he'd be Chayv. Mimai, how do we know that the, he specifically has to stop in order to rest? Mido Amar Mar, from the fact, so generally Amar Mar means that we're going to quote a Brisa that we, you know, that, that we uh, quoted earlier, but over here it just means Mido Amar Mar as, as Abai's master Rabbah, because Abai's teacher, Abai's teacher, I think was both Rabba and Rava, and, and Abai, right? His contemporary was, no, I'm sorry. Abai's teacher was both Rabba and Rav Yosef. His contemporary was Rava. And we saw that story in Masech the Brachos when Rabba said to both of his students, Rava, Rava and Abai, right? Where is God? And they both, you know, I think it was Rava pointed up, Abai went outside and pointed up to the heavens. And he said, you're both going to be great rabbis. So they were both students of uh, Rabba over there. Anyways, so Abai says from the fact that Rabbah says, Tohdalad Amos Amod Lafush Potter Lukasev Chayev. Chutzadalad Amos Amod Lafush Chayev Lukasev Potter. If a person um, is carrying something for Amos in Rishisarabim, a person is not allowed to carry something for Amos in Rishisarabim, okay? And it would sound like there would have to be an Akira and a Hanacha, right? So basically, if somebody picks up something in Rishisarabim and 
he walks, let's say, three amos, and then he takes a break, and then he walks another three amos. So he walked more than four amos. So if that break that he took in the middle was likatev, was, um, well, if it was lafush, if it was to take a break, well, then it's considered a real um, break. And then when he starts walking again, it's a new Dalad Amos, and he only walked another three Amos, so he basically walked three Amos twice. He never, you know, moved the thing four Amos. But if he just stopped after three Amos to, like, you know, fix the load, and then kept on going, that's not considered really having stopped, and therefore he moved the thing six Amos, right, more than four Amos in Rishos Arabim on Shabbos, and um, he's going to be Chayev. Chutz Dalad Amos, but if he stopped now, now, so now what if he walked four almost straight? He didn't take a break in the middle. He walked four almost straight. And then Amud Lafush, and then he stopped to take a break. Well, then he's going to be Chayev. The cost safe putter. But if he stopped just to fix the load, and then that's it, his friend took it from him. So he didn't do the Hanacha. His friend, right, he just stopped to take a quick break. That's not really considered to having stopped. And then his friend takes it from him. So then, and his friend puts it down. So then there would be putter because there was no Akira and Hanacha. Okay, fine. Very good. So that's how, uh, that's, that's how Abai knows that when you stop, it has to be really stopping, like to take a real break and not just to fix the balance. Fine. My Kamash what, what, what is, what, what, what is um, Rabbi Yochanan teaching us? Shlohaisa Akira Misha Rishona Lechach. That what? That since the initial Akira was not with the intention of Hotza'a, therefore he's not going to be when he stops in the other Rishus, that he has to have a machshava for hotza for the Akira and the Anacha. Ha'amar Rabbi Yochanan Chadazin, Rabbi Yochanan already said this once. Da'amar of Safra, Amar Rabbi Ami, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Ha'mayvir Chafatsu Mizavis Lizavis Venimla Chalein Votzian Potter. Shloisa Akira Misha Rishon Lechach. Rabbi Yochanan already said that if somebody was picking something up with the intention of moving it to just somewhere else in the house, and then he changed his mind, he brought them outside. He's going to be potter because his initial intention was not to take them outside. So we already know this. So the Gemara answer is, yeah, it's not such a big deal. Amorai Ninu. It's just two Amorai, I'm quoting Rabbi Yochanan, but it's the same state of Rabbi Yochanan. One of them said it in the context of like, you know, moving something from, from, from one corner to the other corner. The other one said in the context of like, if he was carrying Ochlan and Mashkin, you know, but... It's, 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 they're really both saying the same thing. They're quoting the same opinion of, of Rabbi Yochanan. One is Rabbi Ami quoting Rabbi Yochanan. One is Rabbi Eli quoting Rabbi Yochanan. But, it, but it's really the same thing. It's nothing to get too worked up about. Uh, Zel, that was today. Okay, cooled off. You know, we had to move slowly. It was, it was very thorough. But it was um, cooled off. Um, yeah, we learned a little bit more about Rosh Hashanah and Rosh Hashanah kind of things. Um, uh, Yado Shal Adam. Kedalad al Dalad, and also Melechas Machsheves. Uh, very cool, interesting stuff in our exploration of Mesech Shabbos. And uh, cool. Hope you all enjoyed. Looking forward to going weiter with you all tomorrow. Peace.